show, which to my knowledge is the largest non-sports vintage show in the United States. The goal today is to grab some PC cards that I've been looking for for a while. There's some early 1930 non-sports that I've been trying to find at some card shows or online, but have had no luck. So take you guys with me and let's see what I can find. First purchase here at the show, got Machine Gun Kelly and Pretty Boy Floyd. Grab these three cards for $10. You're familiar with G-Men. They're one of the most iconic sports card sets. It was created by Gum Inc., also known as Bowman. And there's a lot of intricacies with the set based off of numbering, copyright year, as well as some being hand cut, but those are all discussions for another day. Next pickup at the show, I got a stack of 1960s rock cards and also a full set of Lord Nielsen's from 68 and 69. The Hendrix is in there as well as the Rolling Stones, the Beatles, a bunch of other bands I'm gonna show you right now. Sand Tozer. I have been doing the Philly non sport card show ever since 1984, and it has been in various locations. It's been in New Jersey, it's never actually been in Philly. It started in Ben Salem, but nobody wanted to call it the Ben Salem non sport card show, so it became the Philly non sport card show. And uh, this is only our second show in. Uh, Oaks, and this is a very nice facility. And right now, the hottest thing is garbage trail kids. And uh, I was smart enough to buy a lot of toys back in the 80s. And uh, I had, I still have quite a bit, but I've sold ver very much of it. I've sold foreign sets, and uh, we actually run the show now, and we love it. And uh, that's about it. Next three pickups here. So we have a 1932 US Carmel of FDR. I believe this is his first card. Then we have a 1938 Stan Laurel and then an Amelia Earhart. I got all three of these for 190. So I wanted to go over real quick the 32 Carmels because some people don't realize there's two different sets. There's a sports set and then there's also one that focuses on the presidents now the sports set is a mixture there's baseball in there there's golf and there's boxing they're pretty expensive cards because you don't see them that often on the president's side they are a bit more affordable however the mckinley is a holy grail of non-sports cards there's rumored to be about 10 or so out there and it's considered like the hannes wagner so i have developed a website it's nonsport.com it's the hyphenated version so n-o-n-sport.com and we have documented all the non-sport trading cards that we possibly can from the late 1800s up to today and it includes food issues and cereal box backs and tobacco cards and gum cards and there's a search engine on there you can you could like if you're looking for General Custer, you can type in General Custer and it'll show you all the sets that General Custer came on, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We have over 200,000 pictures uh, that you can go in there and peruse. So you can just go in there and spend all kinds of time just looking at things and learning things. So if you want to learn about non-sport cards, that's what you do. Go to nonsport.com. Some of you guys might be familiar with the 1932 Sonoma Bay Group and how this card was pasted into books over in Germany. I actually found one of the books here at the card show. And if you open this up, right here on page 83, we have the, the Sonoma Bay Group. I remember where I bought that. I bought that in Brimfield, Massachusetts. 
from some vendor at a uh, at the Brimfield flea market. But I'm talking about 20 years ago. So I've had it in my collection for 20 years. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm going to remove the Babe Ruth from the book and get it graded through PSA. It's going to be fun documenting the process here on the channel. What's up, guys? I'm Brett from the Fishtown Card Show, uh, another card show here in Philadelphia. Here at the non-sports card show in Oaks, PA, hanging out with Ryan, uh, having a great time. Got some pickups over here. Um, got this card from the Big Bang Theory. Adam Carolla from Family Guy. My guy Echo from the show Lost. Rest in peace, Gilbert Godfrey, one of my favorite comedians. Jack Hanna, the animal guy. Game of Thrones, Sam. Everyone's favorite, Bethany Frankel. A Lucille Ball car. And uh, yeah, come check us out at the Fishtown Card Show in a couple weeks. I'm gonna combine two deals in one. I grabbed this stack over here for $60. Really headlined by this Edgar Allan Poe, which is 1800s card by Duke. You have a Ray Robinson from 1951 ringside, and then also some soccer cards from the 1930s. Now, I'm not a soccer expert by any means. I haven't done my research on pre-war soccer to the extent I really should, but I talked to some of my friends that know soccer, and they said these were a grab, so check them out. So I already moved the one soccer star. My friends Brad wanted it and he had a Jack Hobbs rookie, which is one of the best cricketers of all time. So we ended up trading right after the card show. Hey, uh, we're at the uh, Philly show and the springtime version and sales have been brisk so far. I've uh, been getting a lot of attention to garbage pail kids uh, today. Uh, I think some others, Horrors of War has been pretty popular. A lot of uh, tobacco cards have been uh, flying out of the box. Mars Attacks, which I wish I had more of, uh, but I've had a lot of interest in that. U.S. Navy Victories I've had a lot of uh, attention on. Pretty good variety, a lot of... Uh, a lot of and, and promo cards. People love promo cards and at a buck a piece, it's a great thing to collect. So it's been fun so far. Before I go over my thoughts on the show, you guys should check out the pickups that Steven got this weekend in Dallas. What is going on guys? It's Steven here after the Dallas Card Show and I'm going to show you guys what I picked up for the personal collection. First off, right here, we have a Bronco Nagurski Dixie Lids card. You see, he really doesn't have a lot of cards. His only real one comes out of National Chickle, 1935. So this one is very cool to have. This came from Ice Cream Lids. Let's check on the back right here. Dixie Lids, to be exact. It's a really cool card. They're super unique. There's some other cool stuff in there too, like a Sammy Bog pre-rookie. But Bronco Nagurski, famous wrestler, famous football player, something I really wanted to pick up. I saw it at a great price and I couldn't pass it up. And next, my second real big pickup for the PC is the Larry Berra, Yogi Berra, Tip Top Bread 1947. It's a really cool card and really scarce. This is Yogi Berra's real first ever card. He did have some other stuff in some Bond Bread issues, but they're not. There's been a lot of controversy in the card community about whether those were actually released in 1947 or not. Therefore, this is his real true pre-rookie card, if you will. It's awesome too, because most people, when they think of Yogi Berra's rookie card, they think of the 48 Bowman. They never really think of the 47 Tip Top Red. So I was really excited to do a partial trade for this and trade some even modern in for some awesome vintage. And I did have to throw some cash on top, but still something that's totally worth it. Thanks for checking it out, guys. All right, so my thoughts on the show this weekend. Really, really enjoyed it. 
It was more than just non-sports though. I'd say 95% of the show was that. 5% was actually vintage baseball. So some dealers brought their vintage baseball cards there and sold them as well as the non-sports. It was mostly raw cards. I'd say probably less than 30 or 40 slabs in the entire room. And it was just books and books of singles. I mean, it would have taken days to go through all the inventory that was there at the show. A few dealers talked to you guys about what was moving and I can confirm. There was a ton of different tables also that were pretty much selling same exact stuff. You had lots and lots of G-Men. You had Red Menace. You also had some of the other non-sport releases from Tops and Gum Inc. But overall, it was a very successful show. Next card show will be back here in Philly in two weeks for the Fishtown show, which is gonna be a sports card show this time around. I'll see you there.